All right, guys, welcome back to another In 10 Minutes mod tutorial. Today, we're going to be doing Extreme Reactor. So without further ado, here we go. We got to go. All right, so first off, you're going to want to find this Yellowrite ore uh, in the world. It's going to smelt into these Yellowrim ingots, and this is going to be what we use for the rest of the mod. Oh, I didn't realize that they lit up like that. That's cool. All right, guys, so the next thing you're going to want to do is get, all, get a bunch of coal, because that's what we're going to be needing for this, and you're going to want to smelt the coal with coal or another material into these graphite bars, and these are going to be basically another part of our... Um, our crafting recipes, they, they use yellorium, they use graphite, and that, that's going to be a lot of it. All right, so these are going to be the essential blocks and recipes we're going to be needing. So we're going to uh, be making these reactor casings here. Uh, this this is going to be used quite a bit, so you're going to need to make quite a bit of these. But in order to make that, we're going to need to go ahead and make these reactor casing cores. Here's the recipe. That's what it looks like. And then you put it in the middle here and you get four reactor casings. Now you're gonna probably wanna make like, depending on the size of the reactor, uh, I would I would just say like a safe six stacks of these. So you're gonna need a lot of them. Next, we're gonna need to make the brain of the reactor, which is the reactor controller. It needs a redstone comparator, diamond, redstone, and two eulorum ingots along with their reactor casings. Uh, that You'll just need one of these. Uh, we're going to need a reactor control rod. Uh, what this does, it goes on the very top and it connects to the top of these uh, reactor fuel rods. So these will go up, these will hold the fuel inside the reactor, and this will go on the top of them just to kind of control them. So you're going to need however many rows of these you want. Uh, you're going to need these on the top of each set of each one of these, if that makes any sense. Here's the reactor glass. Uh, if you want, you can make this see-through so you can see into it, and this is just simple, it's glass and reactor casing. Then you're gonna need a power tap to get the power out of the system. So you're gonna need to get a bunch of redstone here, nothing too crazy, just a block of redstone in the middle, four redstone around the sides, and reactor casing all around the corners. And then you're gonna wanna make two of these reactor access ports. Now these are gonna be the import and outport of the system. So you'll set one of these to the import and one of these to the outport. I will show you now. So if we we go like this we place these here you can see you can um, set this to outlet mode so this one looks like it's pushing out of that that square this one looks like it's pu pushing into the square so that makes sense all right so now that we have our essential blocks made up we're gonna go ahead and build our the most minimum reactor you can possibly build uh, you will build it like this you need one fuel rod on top of that you need to cap it uh, you need a brain we need an import uh, outport and wire tap and our power tap. Sorry, not wire tap. This isn't uh, Alexa. It says machine is too small. I don't believe you. And so if we place it like this, yep, look at that. There we go. And if we test it out, let's set this one to out and let's set this one to in and we can legitimately activate the reactor and you can see it starts to generate power. I mean, we're only generating 250 RF per tick, but we've hardly done anything yet. So this is the smallest reactor you can possibly make. So as you can see, that's, that's pretty much it for uh, building a reactor. And now we're going to get into cooling it and what size you should make. All right, guys. So the uh, the best way to cool these guys is with liquid and uh, with jelly cryothium. I think it does 0.95 for efficiency with cooling. Uh, water does like 0.5. You could do diamond blocks, like in place of all these, and that'll do I think 0.78 or 86 or something like that. Uh, but we're gonna go over the difference between having this checkerboard pattern having them all together a lot of people use this I, this design including myself though I like to do rows um, but we're gonna we're gonna test out the difference between these two and uh, so as we can see let's activate this reactor and let's go activate this one and then we'll compare them so now that this one is warmed up quite a bit you can see uh, 2.0 and 0.378 0 0.037 37 something 0 0.0 Reset, yeah. And then over here is point, point 0.92 or 2.92. So let's see. 2.91, okay. And point zero, point zero three four, and point zero three seven. So as you can see, you get more power with this design and you get more efficiency than using this just because uh, I guess these when they're next to each other uh, they kind of give each other a power and efficiency boost so now I want to go ahead and try the rows and see which one is different all right so we just added in the rows one which is the one I typically use and we're getting 3.5 and 0 0.04 so it's a bit more because there is one more rod uh, but it is it's quite a bit I would say it's almost better I would say use the rows method of all of these because you do get one more rod within the same amount of space and there's more coolant in the middle. Yeah, I would definitely use that. You're still getting the, 
the togetherness. That's a pretty good design. So now we're gonna test out, I'm just gonna raise one of these up one level and I'm gonna show you the power difference in that. All right guys, so I just wanna show you the difference between having uh, just one more row of the fuel rods in here. So over here we are making, oops, sorry. We are making 3.44 uh, thousand RF per tick at 0.39. A pit, our 0 0.039 efficiency and over here we're making 7.22 so 7200 7, rf per tick at 0 0.075 so as you can see the more you, more fuel rods are in the system the more power you're going to make but also the, the the worse the efficiency gets so just so that but now we're going to get into the turbines all right, so now for the turbines, we're gonna need to make up one of these turbine housing cores. Uh, it, it, it's a lot similar to the, uh, the reactors are made. Uh, so you just need graphite, redstone comparator, more graphite and gold, and you'll get one of these. You'll need to put that in the middle of graphite and iron to get a turbine housing. Next, we're actually going to need to make plutonium, and to make plutonium, you need eight cyanide ingots. That gives you one plutonium, and you get cyanide ingots just from these, uh, these guys running. Um, it's basically, it takes the Eulorium and exports cyanite. So that's all that is. So let's see here. Now we're going to need to make a turbine controller. You need two plutonium, one diamond, one redstone, and one redstone comparator. Boom, you get one of those bad boys. Uh, here we have turbine glass. You're going to want to use that uh, just because it looks better. And if you're going to be spending all these resources, you're going to want to make it look good. Uh, here we go. It basically, it just a uh, power tap for... The turbine, almost identical except for the reactor casings, your turbine housings. Uh, and then we're going to need the um, the fluid ports. So you'll need two of these again. These will just act like the fluid coming in. We're going to need one turbine rotor. Or not one, but you're going to need a few of these. Uh, depending how long you want to make your rotor. Um, you can, I believe you can only put uh, 21 of these turbine rotor blades on it. Um, so there's that for reference. And then you're going to need to make a turbine rotor bearing. So this is what is going to be uh, rotating the rotor or the, yeah, the rotor. And then you're going to want to make some, uh, ludicrit, uh, ludicrit block. You're going to need eight of these in total. So these, this is where it gets really expensive. Um, so I do recommend doing this a bit later in game, uh, but I'm going to show you guys how to convert one of these over into a turbine. We're going to make a turbine. That's the word we're going for. Okay. Let's go over here to the back. Uh, reactor coolant port and I will show you guys the recipe for that uh, just reactor casings bucket iron hopper piston very simple uh, let's go here like this and as you can see it's gonna change a bit it's gonna change a bit uh, we're going to uh, we're no longer making power directly out of this we're basically going to be generating steam if that makes any sense so let's go ahead over here we're gonna grab our turbine housing Okay, we'll just put it on that side so you can see that it does that for some reason. Okay, now we're going to need these bad boys, and we're going to need to have some conduits. Let me grab those real quick. Now, my best friend is the Ender I.O. conduit, just because I feel like it works the best. And we're going to need to grab a wrench. So it's just lime wool, or yeah, lime wool and four iron. Let's, let's go ahead and grab one of these, because we need to swap it. So it's going in on this side out on that side and then in on this side so there you go if you're wondering how to switch those up that's how you do it we're gonna put our power tap over here like so you're gonna want to have this here on the opposite end of the turbine thing and then bring it all the way through all right so the opposite side of where the that guy is you're gonna want to have these come up there you go it's gonna kind of like a uh a coil. There we go. Put the reactor here. Uh, let's go ahead and just move the power tap to over in front of over here. And then we got to put the fins on. Boom. Okay, so there's our turbine. It is ready to go. Except we need to grab some pipe. Yeah, this needs to be it this side so it comes in through there and then the water comes out like and it will take water out of here yep so we're inserting here extracting here and here it's like so and then let's go ahead and activate this so we should be generating Steam. Yep, there we go. And you can see it's working. So we don't need any water anymore because it will turn the water back or the steam back into water if I'm not mistaken. 
Actually, we'll just leave it on there for now. Maybe you guys can see. All right, guys, so we were able to just get it under 10 minutes. It was like 9 minutes and 58 seconds. Um, so I hope you guys did enjoy. If you guys want to know how to control the RPM of the fan, it's done through here. Um, that's just a little tip for you guys. You can dial it in wherever you want. But anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy the episode. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. But guys, it's been Super Turtle, and this has been Extreme Reactors in 10 minutes or less. I hope you guys enjoyed. See you later. Bye-bye.